Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Nakona is a small town in northern Texas with a big mystery. On March 30th of 2015, 18-year-old Caleb Deal borrowed his family friend's Chevy pickup truck, and he was never seen again. His family reported him missing on April 1st. Caleb and his family were close with a man named Ricky Howard, a businessman whom Caleb often worked the odd job for here and there. Even though Ricky was a successful entrepreneur in the area, he harbored some dark secrets. Ricky was accused of sexually assaulting a boy who once worked for him, and information soon came to light that Caleb was another one of Ricky Howard's victims. Ricky was arrested for illegal possession of a firearm, and from there, the floodgates opened. He was indicted in October of 2018 on several charges of indecency with a child and possession of child pornography. Investigators found photos of Ricky sexually abusing Caleb, as well as a burn pit with several of Ricky's computers all melted down. The case went to court, but there was a mistrial due to a juror injury. So in July of 2021, Ricky pleaded guilty to sexual exploitation and was later sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. Let's look back at the case of Caleb Deal, an 18-year-old on the cusp of life who disappeared and is nowhere to be found. For the parents of 18-year-old Caleb Deal, life has become a waiting game. These things happen, they go on, but then all of a sudden, wow. Is this a possibility in our life now? Waiting for him to miraculously walk through the front door or waiting for the news they dread to hear. I'm not ready to let him go. I wanted to still think there is a chance that they're wrong. One thing is for sure, nobody has seen any sign of Caleb since the day he disappeared just over a year ago from his mother's house in Nakona, Texas, about 100 miles northwest of Dallas with a population of just over 3,000 people. It's a small town with some heavy baggage. If there's any good thing that could come out of what has happened to Caleb is the exposure to the reality of what took place and the denial that so much of this town has been under. They can no longer live in this state of denial. Caleb Deal is the youngest of the family, with three sisters and a brother. Tell me about your brother, Caleb. He was a baby. He was mama's boy. And he was, I mean, he was awesome. Really outgoing, friendly, everyone loved him. Fearless. He wasn't one to, to back down from anything, really. Caleb's sister, Courtney, is the last one to see him alive on Monday evening when he heads out the door. And now nobody has any idea where he's gone. He said he was going to visit a friend. His friend wasn't even in town, and we found out later. It was the last time I saw him. And according to police, the friend in question later says that he and Caleb never had any plans to meet. Where on earth is Caleb? And what happened to him? Did anything seem unusual? No, not at all. He had just applied for a job, and he was planning on going back that next day for his interview. Caleb is driving a Chevy pickup truck borrowed from Ricky Howard a family man with a wife and three kids, and a close friend of Caleb's family as well. We went whitewater rafting, all of the family. Their kids were very close in age with all of us. We got along really well. Ricky Howard is a successful and popular businessman in town, but with a checkered past. A former bank president, he was convicted and served time on bank fraud charges in 2007, but he still keeps his friends close. He was a, a good friend. He was the kind of friend that if you needed something, he was the first one to be there and help you. He was a kind, enjoyable guy to be around. Caleb works odd jobs for Ricky, who has investments in farming, cattle, and oil wells, and owns several properties in the area. In fact, police say that the last known person that Caleb contacted before his disappearance was Ricky Howard. What did Ricky Howard say they were talking about? work. Ricky Howard told us that Caleb had told him that he was wanting to borrow the trucks to go to Oklahoma where he had met a girl and worked for her. Nobody else knew anything about it. That's just what Ricky told us. Knowing what you know now, do you think that story is believable? To me, I think no. And when nobody in the family sees or hears from Caleb for two days, one of the first people they contact is Ricky Howard. He tells them the same story about Caleb running away to Oklahoma. And that was the first anybody, you know, none of us had heard anything about some job. He was supposed to be going to school. So that was just kind of unusual. 
He knew he wanted to graduate high school. He knew he had to go to school and he was walking a thin line with the days that he could, he could no longer miss. Two days after Caleb disappears, Tammy Deal files a missing persons report with the police. And never would he just leave and not tell anybody. You know, we were all too close and he was too close with his brother and sisters. But even as she heads out to file the report, the borrowed pickup truck suddenly shows up the same day, but without Caleb. And police and the family are stunned at exactly where it turns up. Of all places, right smack in the middle of Ricky Howard's locked garage. She called Ricky Howard and told him that she was fishing to go to the police and report a missing. About an hour and a half, give or take, from that, Ricky Howard calls the police department and said the truck that Caleb was in, which belonged to Ricky Howard, was found inside his barn. And police say the truck in Ricky's garage raises some important questions that are still unanswered to this day. Was there anything unusual inside the truck? There were three $100 bills zip tied to the stern wheel. The key to the shop, which is normally above the walk-in door to get in the shop, was in the seat of the pickup. The shop was locked up. The only other person that could have access to the shop was Ricky Howard. It was kind of suspicious. If Caleb parked the truck back in there, he could have left the key in there and locked it up. But Caleb had his own key, and it was at his mother's house. So you found this suspicious at the time? It raised eyebrows on, on that, yes. When you talked to Ricky Howard about the truck reappearing, what was his explanation? He was normal. He was not excited. He just wanted to report it. Nobody has an explanation for the money zip tied to the steering wheel. But Ricky Howard fully cooperates, giving cops permission to search his property. And they make some more curious discoveries. He had guns and stuff in a gun safe. Was that illegal? Yes. Did he realize that he was a convicted felon and couldn't own these weapons? I'm sure he did, but it didn't stop him. Ricky is charged with illegal possession of firearms. And cops stay focused on finding Caleb and any evidence that can help. But something is missing. When you searched Howard's properties, I mean, the guy was running a business, you didn't find any computers? We didn't find any computers that were up and running. Now, we did find some that had been destroyed and burnt. Ricky Howard torched his computers. They were burned. Who burns computers? Is that normal around here? It's possible he was cleaning out somewhere. But these torch computers are of great interest to you? Yes. According to police, Ricky's place is a hotbed of destroyed technology. Caleb obviously is a teenager. He has a cell phone. Was his cell phone ever recovered? His cell phone was never recovered by us. After interviewing Ricky Howard, he stated that he found a cell phone smashed in the shop when he was taking the garbage out and threw it in the garbage. And the time the truck was found, the garbage had already been picked up. So we have no evidence that that was Caleb's phone. Police comb the surrounding countryside with dogs searching for any sign of Caleb. But as they ponder Ricky Howard's story, the Deal family only worries more for their son's fate. Something isn't right. I got a sinking feeling in my stomach because things just weren't adding up. I had the what if in my mind. And that what if was based on Things just, they didn't make sense. But it isn't until Chad says he meets with state and federal lawmen that he becomes truly alarmed. All the pieces of the puzzle that had the Texas Rangers and the FBI persuaded that Ricky was most definitely involved with Caleb. That was their persuasion. And so I couldn't ignore, you know, these professionals in the line of business they're in. There is no move to charge Ricky with any foul play in Caleb's disappearance, and the Texas Rangers and the FBI have not responded to our request for comment. But Chad says he cannot rest until he clears the air with Ricky Howard. I tell everybody there at the table, I want them to know that uh, I've loved the Howard family for a long time, and I didn't want anybody to think that I didn't love or care about them, but that I needed to talk to Ricky alone. Rumors and speculation engulfed the small town of Nakona, Texas in the days and weeks following the mysterious appearance of the pickup truck in Ricky Howard's garage. The last person seen driving the truck is 18-year-old Caleb Deal, who borrowed it from Ricky. His fate remains unknown, and his family is left living in a limbo of fear and worry to this day.
Al, you've had now over a year to think about your brother's disappearance. Any theories on what happened and why? I have absolutely no idea. I know a lot of people want to go to that Ricky did something to him and that he's gone. But it's very hard for me to go there. I need proof. Courtney, your mom said it's difficult to take any more family photos with all her kids because Caleb's not in them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just before we came inside, we took a picture. And there's just something missing. There will always be something missing. I mean, we're, there was five, you know, three girls and two boys. And now I feel like we have one brother instead of two. I didn't know what else to do. I was tired of dealing with things in my mind and asking questions. I wanted to ask Ricky Howard some questions. Unable to remain silent, Chad heads to Ricky Howard's house and confronts him man to man with his suspicions. It's a dramatic and frightening encounter. Well, I took my chair and I squared it up to the table and I looked at Ricky. I said, well, Ricky, I want you to know and I want you to hear it from me so it's not rumor that I believe with every fiber of my heart, my soul and my mind that you've murdered my son. No expression of sadness, no outshowing of anger. He said, well, I'm sorry you believe that. I said, well, that is what I believe and I gotta go. And I got up and I turned around and I walked out. I didn't have to get into the reasons why. I believe he knew why. It was the most intense moment of my life, for sure. Chad has his theories and police have their suspicions. Is Ricky Howard a suspect in Caleb's disappearance? I would say Ricky Howard is a person of high interest. Of high interest. That's what I would say. And to be clear, Ricky Howard has not been charged with any involvement in the disappearance of Caleb Deal as his attorney, Bob Estrada, will gladly tell you. Why do you think Ricky Howard is the focus of the investigation into Caleb Deal's disappearance? I think he's the focus of the investigation because of the internet chatter. Internet chatter. Yeah, right. There's been a lot of it. There's different websites, there's different talks, there's lots of innuendo, but so far there's been no proof. But in the course of the investigation into Caleb's disappearance, other shocking developments now come to light. It happens when police interview a man who once worked for Ricky Howard. So you're interviewing this individual who used to work for Ricky Howard when he was a teenager, and out of nowhere, he just says Ricky Howard molested him? Right, I, during the interview process, he goes on and states that. And this happened over 20 years ago? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yes. How many boys subsequently have come forward? At this time, I want to say five or six. Several of them are outside the statute of limitations. They come forward and say when they were boys, they were molested by Ricky Howard. Correct. How many are within the statute of limitations? As of right now, I believe two or three. It's two decades old, this case. How confident are you these charges are gonna stick? Confident. I can't elaborate why, but I'm confident. But you think there's enough evidence if this goes to trial that these sexual assault charges on minors will stick to Ricky Howard. I'm confident. The Deal family says they don't know if Caleb was victimized by Ricky Howard, but looking back, they can only wonder. It just didn't add up. Coupled with, we had begun to spend lots of time with them as a family and nothing added up. The characteristics didn't manifest themselves, so we were just friends. I look at pictures of us on vacations with them, you know, and we all look, I think we all look so normal and happy. But after posting a bond of a half million dollars, Ricky Howard is preparing to appear in court on multiple charges, illegal possession of firearms, and four counts of aggravated sexual assault of a child. Attorney Bob Estrada says he's got this. Has Ricky Howard offered a plea, whether innocent or guilty? The pleas uh, for the aggravated sexual assault is not guilty. Uh, the plea to the gun charges is something we're going to resolve before the court. One of the people they interviewed who worked for Ricky Howard, he came clean and said that Ricky Howard molested him 20 years ago. And, uh, and 500 times over a four-year period. Think about that. 500 times 
over a four year period and he says nothing. Because he was a boy. He still said nothing. And he was able to talk. Do you know why he said nothing? He said that Ricky Howard kept a rifle in his truck and he was scared. This is a rural area. People keep rifles in their truck all over the place. So then what about the fate of Caleb and the truck he was last seen driving mysteriously showing up in Ricky's garage? Mysteriously shows up or mysteriously disappears. What's the mystery? The mystery is that the truck shows up in the warehouse, but there's no Caleb. But the truck shows up where it belongs. That's the mystery. Caleb was the last one to have the truck, and the truck shows up, and there's no Caleb. That's the mystery. Well, we don't know that Caleb was the last one to have the truck. All we know is that Caleb borrowed the truck. He's the last known person to have the truck. That's right. OK. And the truck shows up, and there's no Caleb. Right. But somebody knows. Absolutely somebody knows. Right. That's what we're doing on the story. Somebody knows. Okay. Somebody, somebody knows. What happened to Caleb? We'd like to know what happened to Caleb. What does Ricky Howard think happened to Caleb? I can't get into what Ricky Howard thinks happened to Caleb. Has he told you? I'm not going to answer that question. And how about those burned computers cops found on Ricky's property? You know anything about that? I don't remember seeing torched computers on a list of seized items. It's weird to hear, I'm sure you would admit, to hear someone had a burned computer. Well, how do we know it's Ricky's? It was at his property. That doesn't mean it was his. Other people had access to the property. But he does have at least one theory about what really happened to Caleb. His family says he was never abandoned his family, abandoned his friends, never check into social media, not have a phone, not have any money. I mean, the going down the list, it's very unlikely that he just disappeared on you his own. You go through the list, but there are other documented stories of people who have walked off and started a new life. There are other people who simply start a new life somewhere else. And at 19, he'd be able to do it. That's a long way from Chad Deal's face-to-face -face encounter with Ricky Howard. But only time will tell if they will meet once again on the question, perhaps before a judge and jury. In the meantime, a family continues to hang on and wait for answers. As a mother, your hope is that your son is still out there alive. Mm -hmm. And it, until they can really show me some kind of proof, I don't know if I'm ever going to not have that hope. There's just that feeling. There's always a feeling. You can feel it with, with all of us that it's not right, and that it will never be right unless he comes home. I just miss him. I miss him so much.